My name is Michael Stähler. I'm a uro-oncologist at the University of Munich in Germany. Today, we are going to discuss an advanced renal cell carcinoma patient case. We will consider suitable first-line options, how to define progression in long-term durable response, and explore the right time to switch to second-line therapy. Today's patient is a 50-year-old man diagnosed with clear cell or renal cell carcinoma during partial nephrectomy early 2018. Staging after surgery was PD-1B G2R0, and the patient had regular follow-up after restaging after surgery. In May 2021, he was mainly asymptomatic with an ECOG performance status of 1, an IMDC intermediate risk, and the labs were normal. The wife claimed he was forgetting things and had a headache more frequently. Imaging revealed disease progression with metastases in the lung, lymph nodes, both adrenal glands, and the brain. So in this situation, the MDT recommended initiation systemic first-line therapy for the patient. How would you treat the patient at this stage? Would you commence treating with an IO-IO combination or with an IO-TKI? There is data from four key studies showing that first-line systemic therapy with a PD-1 inhibitor with either VEGFR targeted therapy or CTLA-4 inhibitor have improved progression-free survival and overall survival for patients with advanced clear cell renal carcinoma. The trials to mention are Checkmate 214, Keynote 426, Checkmate 9ER, and the CLEAR trial. Based on these studies, the ASCO and EAU treatment guidelines recommend that advanced CCRCC patients with intermediate or poor risk disease should be offered first-line systemic treatment with either ipilimumab and nivolumab, exidinib plus pembrolizumab, cabozantinib and nivolumab, lenvadenib and pembrolizumab. However, this particular patient had previously untreated brain metastases. Patients with brain metastases have often been excluded from clinical trials, so data is limited. But there is some data from the Nivaran study that suggests nivolumab activity is limited in patients with untreated brain metastases from CCRCC. This also reflects our own clinical experience. Therefore, the decision was made to treat this patient with an IOTKI combination, and lenvadenib plus pembrolizumab was selected as first line systemic therapy, as you can only choose one of the options available. After three months of treatment, scans showed a rapid partial response, and the disease remained stable after that. In April 2023, Scans two years after initiation of IOTKI therapy still showed a durable response. The patient maintained a good quality of life and continued to work part-time. Besides that, only minimal side effects on the IOTKI therapy were seen. They were mainly fatigue and hypertension and were treated with exercise and ACE inhibitors. No other grade 3 or 4 AEs and no dose reductions were required. Two and a half years after starting treatment with lenvadenib plus pembrolizumab, we encountered new lesions in the bones, especially in the spine at multiple locations. On progression in this situation, what would you do at this stage? Would you switch to second line treatment or would you keep the patient in current treatment and add local therapy for the new onset of bone lesions? We would generally only consider switching to second-line therapy when the patient shows a worsening of clinical status and multiple new lesions during imaging. Keep in mind that not only response needs to be confirmed, but also progression. So sometimes it makes sense to keep the patient on their line of therapy, add local therapy like radiotherapy and wait for a confirmatory scan to see whether this is generalized progression or just one or two new lesions and this patient is still benefiting from their first-line therapy. 
And this time, the patient is still responding well to first-line treatment with lenvatinib and pembrolizumab. We treated the bone metastasis locally with radiotherapy and continued the patient on their current treatment on lenvatinib plus pembrolizumab. With the next scan four months later, we do see disease progression with new lesions in the lungs on both sides. As this is a sign of clear disease progression and a failure of your first-line therapy, the patient is now to be switched to second-line therapy. So which second-line options would you choose? Would you choose to treat with an alternative VEGFR-targeted therapy or treat with an immunotherapy? It is likely that all approved VEGFR-targeted therapies have some activity and should be considered the standard of care. ASCO and EIU guidelines propose the patient could receive any VEGF-targeted therapy that has not been used previously in combination with IO, such as exitinib, abazantinib, pazopinib, zionentinib, or tibozinib. Data from the Meteor trial supports the use of cabazantinib in the second line setting after via VEGFR targeted therapy. In this case, the patient was given cabazantinib as second line systemic therapy. Whilst being treated with cabazantinib, the patient lost 10 kilograms of white. He had mild side effects, including grade 2 diarrhea, fatigue, and grade 2 hand foot syndrome. All these were managed with supportive care and those adjustments. The patient continued with cabozantinib as second line therapy with ongoing monitoring and regular imaging studies every three months. At this time, the nine month follow up scans are pending. I hope you have found this patient case informative. To summarize the patient case, patient demonstrated a rapid, long-term durable remission over two and a half years with a first-line systemic IOTKI based on lenvatinib and pembrolizumab. Bone metastases were treated with local therapies, enabling the patient to continue on their first-line therapy. Second-line therapy was initiated when multiple lung lesions were detected, indicating clear progression of disease. The bone lesions still are stable and controlled, and no new lesions in the bones have occurred. Key points to take away from this educational program are clinical guidelines recommend a frontline combination with either IOIO or IOTKI for IMDC intermediate and poor risk patients with advanced clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Patients who achieve a prolonged response on first-line therapy can continue on this treatment until clinical and radiographical disease progression occurs. To ensure optimal sequencing of treatments, patients should receive a VEGF-targeted therapy that has not been used previously in combination with immunotherapy. Thank you for your attention.